Greetings and welcome to this Blender Cookie tutorial. My name is Kent Trammell and today I want to show you how you can both model and rig a spiral phone cord. Here we have a simple phone model that I've put together for this video uh, with a simple base, a finger plate, and uh, the receiver, but uh, we have no cord. So when it comes to something like a phone cord or like a spring, it's best to figure out how to model this procedurally with modifiers. And Blender has a couple that makes this very easy. So I will hide, uh, let's see, hide everything. Hit Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Then tab into Edit Mode and hit X, uh, Delete Only Faces, leaving us with four connected vertices. I will scale these down a bit, move them off to the side away from the object's origin, then hit RX90 and I like to hit RY45 to orient it like a diamond. And this is the setup for using Blender's screw modifier. So let's jump over to the modifier panel and let's go find screw. And we can see that it used our connected vertices as the profile for this tube that um, is kind of screwing into itself. So over here with the screw set to zero, let's change this. I'm holding shift because it's a pretty um, touchy slider and you can see that uh, now we have the spiral separating and moving vertically. So over here in the modifier we have a few options like axis, which direction we want it to aim at. We can use another object as the axis for our spiral, angle of revolution, steps, render steps. I'll be coming back to these later. We also have um, the calc order, which if you look in here you can see that our normals seem to be a little bit messed up. So if I turn on calc order, that's basically like recalculating our normals in the modifier. Uh, this other option called iterations, this is how we um, determine how many revolutions are taking place. So let's turn our axis back to Z, that's the way I had this set up. And you can see that this is starting to look like a phone cord. And we're going to need many iterations to make this believable. And that is why I used only four vertices, because with so many revolutions, we're going to be building up a lot of geometry, and I want to keep this as lightweight in poly count as I can. So this also brings me to the steps value. So if I go into wireframe, the steps is controlling how many edge loops is going around my tube. So if I start turning this down from 16, we can see that we're saving a lot of unnecessary polygons. So I'm going to turn this down to about six. And then let's also add on top of this a subdivision surface modifier because of course we will be um, rendering this smoothed. Um, so as I preview that, perhaps I will turn the screw down a bit, somewhere like that. Yeah, I think that looks like a pretty good cord and I've made sure to keep this geometry as efficient as possible. So let's unhide my uh, phone objects and let's figure out a scale for this uh, cord. Right now it's way too big. So let's scale it down with S and then just kind of eyeball a good proportion for it compared to the uh, phone. I think about like that looks good. But I want to be sure to apply this scale, control A, scale. And then we can see that our screw value is now offset. So let's turn that back down to about there. Yeah, that looks good. Now I need several more iterations, so I'm going to make that 100. And for the purpose of this video, this is going to be fine. So now that I've got the model created, the big issue is how do I position it properly? Because the cord is very rarely out straight like this unless the person using it is standing far away from the base. And the way I would usually pose this for a static model is to have the cord laying on a table or draped over the edge, something very natural that you would see in a phone cord. And this can be achieved very practically by attaching the spiral geometry to a Bezier curve. So I'm going to use this setup and incorporate it into a rig for animation. Let's rotate this cord um, negative 90 along the x-axis and then I'm going to position this guy in the back of the phone and then also position the receiver appropriately so that the cord 
fits in the bottom here we go just like that let's see next I'm going to add the Bezier curve that will be controlling the curvature of our core geometry so I'll select my core and then hit shift s cursor to selected because I want to add this um, spline at the base of this geometry so let's hit shift a curve Bezier tab into edit mode let's zoom in and uh, if I go to the top view we can see that by default this first handle uh, is rotated 45 degrees so I'm going to hit R 45 to line it up straight again then I'll tab back into object mode and rotate this guy um, to match up with our cord but I want the normals here which are represented by uh, the arrow like shape I want the normals to point down the other direction of my cord so let's uh, RZ 180 there we go that's looking good then I'll tab into edit mode and uh, position uh, how about I turn off my handles and my normals there we go I want the first point to line up with the origin and then let's take the second point and move it all the way to the end of our cord there we go that looks good I can turn my handles back on select both points with a and let's add a few more points in here with the subdivide option I'll click it once and then um, let's adjust the number of cuts and this is really up to you it depends on how much control you want over this cord for this video I'm going to leave it at three but you can add as many as you want now we have that set up properly and uh, if I select my core geometry I can now add uh, another modifier called the curve modifier and I'm going to reposition that above the subsurface modifier and let's select our Bezier curve but I might as well name this properly I'm going to call it MCH for mechanism cord spline there we go now if I select my spline points you'll notice that the cord goes with it and this is great because the cord moves exactly how it would in reality the only problem here is you can see as I move this point away the geometry remains the same length instead of being pinned down here and matching the overall length of my spline so let me undo that move and then in object mode I will go to the object data of my Bezier curve and we have two options that I want to turn on in the shape drop down and in the bottom right corner it's stretch if I turn that on you can see that uh, our cord is really really stretched out but then the bounds clamp option will force it to match the size of the spline itself so now if I move my points we can see that the geometry stretches uh, automatically to match the size of the spline and this is the setup I was talking about uh, that I would use if I was just creating a static model but it's not really useful for animation because we don't use edit mode for animating so in order to make this more animation friendly or rig friendly specifically I'm going to turn off my handles and pick each point one at a time hit the space bar type in hook and click the hook to new object button this will create an empty that we can see here over in our outliner it's just called empty and if I move this in object mode we can see that the point on the spline has been parented to this empty and I want this for each one of my points so I'll tab back into object mode click hook to new object and then go down the line hitting shift R to repeat the last command there we go I can tab back to object mode and let's uh, name these properly I'll call it MCH cord hook uh, I actually want to put triple uh, zero at the end and then copy that string and then go down the line control clicking on each name pasting to rename and automatically renumber each new selection there we go if I click down the line now we can see that they're in the proper order all named appropriately and to make this um, most efficient for animation it's best to use an armature so let me hit shift C to return the cursor to the origin and hit shift a 
uh, armature single bone. And if I tab into edit mode for the armature, in the object data panel, we have an axes option. If I turn that on, we can see the axes of each bone. And the way bones are oriented in Blender is they always point down the Y axis. But this is different from the world because the Y axis is pointing front to back in my scene, whereas for the bone, it's pointing up. So it's a good habit to orient the bones in the familiar orientation of the world. So if I change my uh, pivot point to 3D cursor and hit RX negative 90 and zoom in here on the axes, we can see that the Y axis is pointing down the green line and Z is up and X is to the left. This is an intuitive uh, orientation for the bone. So uh, this will be the root. I can scale this up and uh, call it root. Then let's shift D to duplicate it, scale it down. This is going to be called the base. Then let's uh, select this empty over here at the connection of the cord to the phone and hit shift S cursor to selected back to edit mode on the armature and hit shift A to create a new bone where that empty is located. Again, hit RX negative 90 and let's move this guy again uh, to match the size of our spline. And it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, but I guess it doesn't hurt to be perfect. So I'll select that other empty and hit Shift S cursor to selected. Go back to edit mode and Shift S snap selection to the cursor. There we go. Now it's perfect. And I'll rename that bone chord stretch and also put an MCH as a prefix. Then hit Shift D to add another bone and then shift S to snap the selection to the cursor. Scale it down to roughly match the size of our receiver because this will be called the receiver bone. And the last bones I need to add are to be positioned where each of these um, empties are located. So uh, if I tab to object mode, shift S, uh, cursor to selected, back to edit mode in our armature, hit shift A, R, X, negative 90. And we'll name this chord.000. Now I will duplicate them to be about the same position as the other two. And then I'll uh, quickly snap them into position. There we go. So next I want to add a constraint because the way I want this to work. This bone in particular I named, let's see here, it's named Chord Stretch. So the goal that I have is to move the uh, receiver bone in pose mode like this and have the Chord Stretch bone both aim at and stretch to the receiver. So I can do this by uh, first selecting the receiver bone, then shift selecting the stretch bone, hitting shift control C, and this brings up the Add Constraint with Targets menu. And then under the Tracking uh, menu, we have Stretch to. We can see the stretch bone turn green, meaning it has a constraint applied to it. And now when I move the receiver bone, we can see that uh, the stretch bone is very nicely stretching and aiming at the receiver bone. But uh, I can do without the volume preservation. So I'll select the stretch bone, go to um, Bone Constraints, and let's turn off the volume preservation. There we go. Now it uh, remains the same size, but it stretches appropriately. Alt-G to return the receiver bone to its uh, starting location. And next, let's parent each of these control bones uh, for the cord. I want to parent each of these to the stretch bone. So I can select them in pose mode, but I have to parent them in edit mode which keeps the same selection from pose mode, then hit control P, keep offset. Back into pose mode, you can see now that um, each of these bones stretches and aims at the receiver appropriately, but it's not taking the cord with it. In order to do that, I'm going to select each hook, except for the beginning and the ending hook, just the hooks in the middle, then shift select my armature, which will go straight to pose mode, and I want to come in here and select the bone that I designated to control each specific empty. Deselect the other bone, hit Control P, 
and uh, parent to the bone. And I'll do that down the line. There we go. Now when I move the receiver bone, we can see the cord start to move with it. Well, not the whole cord because I left off the first and last empty, but we can see our cord start to react appropriately. So I'll right click to cancel that translation and then I'll select the receiver and the first hook empty and then shift select the receiver bone, control P, parent those objects to the bone. Now as I move the receiver, we can see the cord go with it. Now I want to jump back into edit mode on my armature and do some cleanup in the rig as far as parenting. I'll parent the receiver bone to my root bone, control P, keep offset. Then parent the stretch bone to the base bone and select that last uh, hook empty and also parent it to the base bone. Now let's move those, see if it all works properly. Yeah, that looks good. I can move the base and the cord will follow it. But the actual base geometry, I need to parent that as well to the base bone. There we go, that looks really good. And if I move the root bone, the entire thing should move, but uh, it looks like my base bone is not parented to the root. Make sure to do that in edit mode. Now when I move the root bone, everything goes with it. That looks great. And that's really it for the rig. Uh, I can hide the bones that I'll never move. Also hiding each of these um, hook empties. And then um, I can start to pose this phone. How about I turn off relationship lines? Also turning off the spline and rename this core geometry. And perhaps turning off selectability. Here we go. Now I can just uh, position this cord however I want to. And it matches or uh, stretches to the receiver. That works great. I can... Um, rotate the receiver however I want to. Scaling each of these bones is like scaling the handles of my spline, so I can really fine tune that curve if I want. Move the base separately, everything still um, works together very well. The only real thing left to do to call this a complete rig is to clean up the bone shapes by adding custom widgets. So uh, I'll do that real quick.
It's not gorgeous, but here we have some custom widgets that uh, make it a little bit easier to control the rig that we set up. And I'm going to go ahead and position this um, receiver to sit on top of the base. There we go. I would recommend moving the receiver uh, first before manipulating the cord. But uh, once I've got that set where I want, it becomes pretty easy to move our cord into place. And yeah, there we go. By scaling in the um, local Y direction. Again, I'm controlling the spline underneath. And though no rig is perfect, uh, I think it works pretty well. So thank you for watching.